He's a good kid. He's a little kid, very protective. He was very, very protective. When he was a teenager, he dabbled in smoking marijuana and, you know, other little things. But as he grew and he got married, he stopped. He stopped doing that kind of stuff. He liked to drink. Travis liked alcohol. That was his, I guess, drug of choice. He had had a few DWIs, so he had a breathalyzer in his truck. Um, but drugs weren't his, his forte. It was more alcohol which got him in trouble. His adult life, he was married. He had two beautiful daughters. Um, one now is 11 years old. The other one is four. Um, he's got a beautiful wife. He owned his own business. Um, he's did a, a alarm systems, like put alarm systems in um, hospitals and things. And um, Life was good for him. I mean, he was had everything he wanted. He didn't have to worry about anything. He fished, loved to fish. And so that was his big hobby. Life was good. Alcohol got him in trouble. He was going to go fishing. He drove in from Dallas. He stopped in Katy, Texas to pick up my nephew. Um, my nephew... My son has spent most of his life trying to save my nephew. My nephew is into drugs, very very heavily into drugs. So he spent most of his life trying to keep him safe. And he stopped at a pub to meet my nephew. My nephew's gonna meet him there and they were gonna drive down to my house to go fishing. And Travis waiting on him, trying to get a hold of him, couldn't get a hold of him. So he started drinking. And he drank to where he couldn't drive, so he had to, because he has a blower in his truck, so he had to try to find a ride. He called a few people, um, and he called my nephew's ex-sister-in-law, and she said she would come pick him up. She picked him up and took him to a hotel in Katy that was not registered in his name, and took him there. and. I guess they stopped on the way because he had a monster drink. Um, he had his little puppy. He had a puppy with him. And they went into the hotel, and Travis, they put it in his drink and videotaped him dying. And they took $600 from his phone to her phone, like transferred it. They took his wallet. They took his truck keys. They took um, all his, he had new clothes with him. They took all his new clothes and left him there to die. Somebody sent me a video um, of Travis actually laying in the bed dying. They were cleaning up the room, um, but the police had tested his um, monster drink because they, I don't know why they tested it, but they tested his monster drink. But they had said, first they had said that, well, he was a drug addict, that's why he's dead. And I was like, he's not a drug addict. I mean. He's, he's just not a drug addict. So I called the coroner's office and had them test him because I asked if there was a test where they could tell if he was a drug addict. And they took fluid from his eyes and said he was not. And so they tested his the drink and they tested other stuff that was in the room and it was in the drink. I was at a store and my phone had rung a couple of times, but I was talking to somebody. So I call, it was my daughter-in-law and I called her back and she said that she couldn't get a hold of my son and wanted to know if I had spoke to him and I told her no. So she had called his phone repetitively and a police officer answered and told her that he was deceased. He had been there for a couple of days. They say if they get his phone open, then they can look and see if um, anybody made a comment to him about drugs. I said, but it's in his drink. There's a videotape, but it doesn't show the girl putting the stuff in his drink. It just shows the guy who was there cleaning up the room, putting him in the bed and covering him up and turning the air. He turned the air down so his body would be more preserved. That's what he told me. I talked to the guy who videoed. The only thing I can think of, and this is because of my nephew. My nephew went kind of crazy um, and started posting all this stuff about um, 
Travis. And so I messaged him and I'm like, what are you talking about? Which I have the text messages. And he told me that those people were mad at him and he thinks that they did this to get back at him. They say it's still under investigation, but nobody, nobody will return my calls. Might be because I called him incompetent. They said unless they can get in his phone and see that somebody said they were going to put drugs in his drink, there was no case. Said you're not going to find that. They put him off as, well, he was around drug people. He's, that's what he gets. These people rent a hotel room in that hotel every weekend. The same set of people. There's a guy with guns in his hands. The, the name of the room, it's a guy on Facebook with guns in his hands, like big guns. I mean, that's, and when I asked that guy about if he knew my son, he said, I don't recall, send a picture. So I sent a picture of Travis and he said, oh yeah, dead, not alive. But I had a grandbaby that wasn't even, she was barely one that he was to live for, not to die for, he was to live for. I've been in the schools. I've been holding town meetings, events, talking about the dangers of fentanyl, and really trying to raise awareness because it's everywhere now. Um, here locally, in my area, we have kids in high school, in junior high school, in the bathrooms dying from perk 30s and from vaping and everything else. So I'm doing my best. I'm forming a team of moms and we're going out and fighting. I won't be quiet. This is real life facts that you need, to, people need to hear and need to see. When the last one, the last school we went to, we went to a high school here locally. And um, during our first, because we did two presentations, during our first presentation, we had a kid actually go up on stage and hug one of the moms and he was bawling right with the mom. And then we had a bunch of them come up and hug us as they were leaving, crying. One of them came up and told us her grandpa was an addict and she was just distraught. But these kids, are they feel it, they understand, they hear it, but they're hearing, hearing the raw story, not just a sugar-coated, because I don't think we need to be sugar-coated on this issue. I think it's just growing to the parents to check your kids' phones. Pay attention to what your kids are doing. Talk to your kids. Make sure that they are, you're involved in their lives and everything they do. Keep them in sports, keep them busy. Keep them away from all of this. Check their friends. Don't let them go spend the night with just anybody because those people's problems end up being your problems. Don't ever think it won't happen to you.